Okay, in this video I'm going to step you through an example, a working example of using Spring Boot and Neo4j, which is a graph database. Actually, pretty cool stuff there. The source code for this example is available on GitHub, and you can go out to Spring Framework Guru, my, my little area on GitHub, and go to the repository spring-boot-neo4j-example and you'll get the source code that I'm about to walk you through here in this video example of Spring Boot. So I'm going to toggle over to IntelliJ now. And first thing, let's take a look at the, the POM. This is a pretty simple Spring Boot POM. I am using the latest release of Spring Boot at the time of recording, which is 152. A lot of good stuff coming out of the Spring guys right now. And what we want here on line 29, to 31 is to bring in the spring data dependency for Neo4j and th this will enable spring data JPA for uh, Neo4j to, to bring everything up and it, it's, it includes everything that we're going to need to connect to Neo4j and then you can see there also I'm bringing in the spring boot starter for good old time leaf uh, the spring boot starter for web components and then finally the, the test, which I don't have any test, which is very bad of me, but this is just a little working example to look at connecting to Neo4j. So I only have one domain class here, and that is the product class. And simple POJO, just like if we were working with JPA, but uh, we're not, but it is a simple POJO. And you can see the annotation there on line 11, node entity. And this kind of works like the JPA entity tag, but specific to Neo4j. A little uniqueness there. And then on line 14, uh, the other important thing is the graph ID. So this is what the ID of that object. And that's going to get persisted into Neo4j. So that is going to get picked up by a Spring Data repository. So under repositories, I have the product repository. And you can see this is a special flavor. It is the graph repository. And this is going to give us basic CRUD operations. So it looks a lot like the CRUD repositories out of regular Spring Data. So a little bit different, but looks pretty much the same to me, to be honest. But the important part here to remember is when we're dealing with Spring Data, we are going to provide the interface. Uh, so we are providing the interface of product repository and using Java generics to pass on product. And what Spring Data for Neo4j is going to do is provide us an implementation of that repository at runtime. So it makes our lives as developers a lot easier because we don't have to write all that boilerplate code to get stuff in and out of Neo4j. Now, you'll also notice that in application.properties to connect to Neo4j, I've got some basic connection information there, set up the username and password, and this is all to my local Neo4j instance, which just happens to be running in a Docker container, which is real cool stuff. But that is the configuration for my Neo4j database running locally. Uh, the port 7474 is kind of standard stuff for Neo4j. So the next thing I want to look at is we have a product repository, and then I've set up a product service. And this is a, a simple interface giving me CRUD type operations over product. I'm going to use that off my controller. And then here's my implementation and we can see that I'm wiring in the product repository. See that's declared on line 19 and then on line 23 to 25 you can see that I have specified a constructor so we are doing dependency injection by constructor there and we are going to wire in the product repository and then I also do have a, a type converter so that is taking in the product form. I'll show you that real quick. You can see that this looks a lot like the product domain class, but this is a, essentially a command object, or some people like to call it a backing bean, to the, the form for when we're adding products. 
and all this gets wired into my product controller so this is a spring mvc controller kind of standard stuff here for spring mvc and into the controller he gets injected in my product service and also a converter for the converter for product form so in this example here on the controller i am using setter based dependency injection just uh, showing you two different examples of their technically constructor based injection is probably preferred but in the world of spring you can do either and then finally between line 41 to down to 81 you can see I have the different methods mapped out for my spring MVC controller now this is all backed up with time leaf templates so my default view is going to be the list view so it's going to expect a list of products and then it's also going to have a link displayed for new products I'm not going to get into all the time leaf particulars in this demonstration I do have a whole course on time leaf if you want to really take a deep dive on on utilizing time leaf it's a pretty cool templating technology now here's product form you'll be seeing some demonstrations of this and then the show template as well so these are going to be used to show the data so like i said i do have a neo4j running inside a docker container i am going to start the application right now i'm just going to run right from intellij and we will see spring boot does start up pretty quick not a lot in this and it is running on 8080 so i am going to toggle over to chrome now and do a quick refresh and I'm not initializing the database at all. So I can just bring in a, a simple product here and say some URL. I'm not doing any data validation. This is just a, a really, really simple example. And we can see that it, it did take it. Now if I come back here, I can see that the, the product has been listed. I can do another product. Let's just do ASDF. You can see that I now have a product ID 2. And I can go back to list and we can see that I have two products in there. I can also go in and edit them. Let's uh, do www there just on the URL. And we can see that that data has persisted. Now, one thing that's neat about Neo4j, at least in the Docker image, you do get a neat little web application. So you can come out here, take a look at the, the database, and you can see that I ha now have a product. And you can see here's my two little nodes. No relationship between them, but I do have two objects persisted out in Neo4j. So this is a kind of a cool little console. The graphing stuff is quite significantly different from a relational database, but Neo4j is definitely a cool technology. And just as a, a reminder, if you want to have the complete source code, just again, it's out on GitHub, a Spring Framework Guru slash Spring-Boot-Neo4j-Example.